Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's podcast, The Engineer Whisperer Transitions. And today, my guest is Brooke. Brooke, welcome to the podcast. Hi, hey, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm super excited to have you here. So give us a little bit intro about you. Well, I'll try to make it a little bit, but um, as you know, I can I can ramble on with the best of them. So, um, yeah, I'm Bert Garvey. I live in the greater Seattle area. I've lived here my whole life, kind of born and raised. I won't call myself a Seattleite, but, you know, a Puget Sounder. Um, I have a wife of, let's see, 14 years, Amy, um, who I kind of met through work, but I didn't. I can get into that if you want. Um, I have two boys, Wyatt and Tucker, twins. They're a little over four and a half. And I have a pug, uh, Sideburns, who's a, an old pug. Um, she's wonderful. Uh, she'd normally be here snoring next to me, but I figured that might get in the way uh, of the of the sound um, quality. So um, my background, kind of professionally, I'm just going to walk through it a little bit um, and, and then kind of get some more meat on it as I get to closer in time, but um, I, I have a bachelor's of science in business and men with finance and accounting a bachelor's degree. I have a JD MBA, which is a law degree and an MBA. I have what's called a, a master's of law and LLM in taxation. And I have several like professional certifications, that kind of thing. Um, I'm a CPA and I'm a licensed attorney. Um, my kind of background professionally experience, I, not right out of school, but pretty close out of school, undergrad, I went and worked at Boeing. I started there, uh, in finance. I, I basically, my first 10-ish years were in finance roles. I started out in like cost management. I think it's called FinOps now, where, you know, you basically support the business, uh, I supported a lot of engineers, uh, customer support engineers, yeah. especially for like out of production models. And, you know, um, I had, actually had an opportunity to work with a lot of different engineering cultures over the years. So I spent a, a few years doing that, um, a variety of different types of finance roles. I then had the opportunity to move into what's called a business manager kind of role on 787. I had the opportunity to, to work on the services side of 787. We basically came in and re-stood up the organization after some of the the delays in the 87. And, and so I really got an opportunity there as kind of a, a an analyst slash first line leader of finance people to really work on not only finance, but an expanded business kind of manager role where I got to touch on all the different parts. It was really interesting. Um, so I did that for about four years. Uh, I was more and more interested in kind of project program management. So I spent a, about a year and a half or so um, in international kind of finance project management. And what I did there was a lot of different things, set up roles, uh, kind of defined processes, but um, really worked with the international organization within Boeing to set up new business entities. And so there's a lot of compliance and due diligence that has to go on in an international setting. So, you know, if we're gonna set up a rep office in Turkmenistan or something like that. Really, a lot of different things got to come into play. That's what, as you'll hear, and if you haven't heard already, a large interest in, in my career and my journey is having the opportunity to touch base on a lot of different things. I really like a variety of subject matter and to get my hands in things. Um, not opposed to process or anything like that, but I like the broad picture and the tactile picture. So I actually had the opportunity from that role to move into what at Boeing um, at the time, I think it's still around, it might've been tweaked a little, it's called the Enterprise Auditor Program. Mm -hmm. It's basically a leadership development program where you go, you're part of audit, you're part of corporate audit, but you're kind of not exactly standalone, but you're a different part of it. And you get the opportunity to work on audits all over the company. So different business units, different processes, everything. It was a very interesting opportunity. I kind of went going in with an expectation of what I was going to learn, you know, large exposure to business process, see how that works and integrates into the actual business. And mm -hmm. I got a lot of that. I mean, one of the certifications I have is, is an internal auditor and I had it before I went into audit, you know, 
But one thing I actually got out of that program and just that perspective is, and you kind of expect it, but I saw a lot more of it was, I don't want to call it politics, but really the interactions and the, and the levers and the pressures that really go into kind of navigating, you know, you're coming from an audit perspective, you're working with the board of directors, basically, ultimately, and you have to come in and help influence, define, and mitigate risk, but you're also working with very senior leaders. Yes. In very sensitive situation. Yes. And so I had the opportunity to, to, to get a lot of deep insights into organizational dynamics, um, what motivates people in, in, in certain ways that you just, I didn't have the opportunity to see before. And then I'll touch base on it right now as it'll lead into going forward. One of the things I've always been interested in and it's somewhat of a transition with this, with that program, it was deliberate, was I wanted the opportunity to get, I would say, more formal and informal, but more formal influence. So when they talk about it's transitioning to a, a director role, whatever that means, mm -hmm. part of that program is designed to have like a, a definitive exit. Like, you know, they, they tell you, you find your own job. You have to graduate out and yes. graduate. Somebody finds your job. So yes. I found a job. I um, actually had the opportunity while I was in the program to work in investor relations in Chicago. So I got to work and plan and do comms for senior leadership for the company and all that, work with investors, um, analysts, stuff like that. And in that role, I had the opportunity to work with um, sales and marketing and strategy. Yeah, because yeah. you were also somehow involved with the external customers of the company yeah, definitely and so um it just happened it was one of these fortuitous occasions that uh there's a group called competitor analysis that that's within strategy but also within sales and marketing at the time and the the SME the company SME for competitor finance um was moving to a different role and I had a chance to work with him before and so it was one of these like oh hey I could do this to get in there and and um it just happened that way i graduated and i'm in that role and so that role it, it was defined as like a regional director role and so when you think of what a director or an executive means it's slightly different because of the way boeing structured things but for all intents and purposes you know we we're going out you meet with customers you meet with suppliers you meet with the community like i had the opportunity to attend the farmer air show yeah, as a yeah. representative. You, yeah. li you literally were meeting with leaders, yes, with definitely. other leaders. And, and as you said, bringing in yeah. that, that influence. Yeah. Um, so as you graduated and entered that role, what was the mindset shift that you remember that you did yeah. intentionally? Yeah. So, I mean, there's these, I don't want to call them stereotypes or, you know, these modicers that people are like, well, this is how executives think or leaders think, and this is how, you know, analysts or technical people think. That To me, that's just bogus, right? It, it, a lot of it's role-defined, a lot of it's responsibility, a lot of it's your, how, what you bring, like how you uh, capture and, and yes. take on roles. But one thing that I definitely have and in, in what, motivated me to get into these type of positions is to take a more strategic look and to be able to influence to more directly that strategic look. So, it, it, you know, in, in a huge corporation, let's say, even a little bit of that might take, you know, you, you might need to get like an E-series or a, a executive facing role externally to move the needle a little bit more. Whereas if you're in a smaller company, you might be able to do a lot. But even that, like getting to that situation and, and role where you can directly bring forth, you know, your opinions, personality, all that in a in an interface with with leaders. Um, and and so that's more of an external side. That that was what I was looking for. And I started to find that. Now on the other hand, too, you know, what comes with that? Well, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. Yes. A lot of you know, as I said, it, it, it differs depending on what role you're in. But like, for example, I was in sales and marketing. So, you know, you, especially when you're dealing with customers or industry, you have to back up, you have to, you know, 
put your money where your mouth is. You have to be very deliberate. And when you commit to something, you have to commit to it. And, and oftentimes you're committing to it, not on your own, but it, you know, you're assessing and evaluating what's going on. Then you have to make sure you go back and really position and bring all that resource behind you. And, and it may be very ambiguous. You may have to, you know, it's not a, it's not a specific process. You have to go back, rally those resources and bring them forward. But how do you do that? Influence, persuasion, and being able to connect the dots to line up, like, for example, here's our strategic goals. Here's how we get there. And this is how this, here's how this deal and this opportunity does that. So I'll, I'll pause in case you had a question. Yeah, because because I'm thinking someone might ask, I'm curious, of, well, how does one do that? Because one could think, okay, that is the scary part, the committing when it's I just don't know really what I'm committing to the a lot, yeah. a lot of unknown. And then the whole, how do I influence to bring the team and the resources? So at that level, where did you find the confidence and the courage to step into that strategic mindset that you're talking about? Yeah. So it, it was, I mean, it, I, I'm not gonna lie. It was, it's scary. It took, you know, a lot of challenges over the years um, you know, I'll, I'll get a little kind of touchy feely here, but for me, a lot of it started when I first was interested, just being interested and in having the opportunity to do this. But a lot of it came with, okay, am I ready? Is this something I can do? Understanding and self-awareness were kind of the first thing for me. It was like, okay, I, I, am I going to be comfortable exploring the unknown? It could go easy, it could go hard, but I don't know. I'm risk averse by nature. So this is even more challenging for me. It's like, yeah. well, this isn't a sure thing at all. I, I don't want to make these bets. And I'm like, but then my passion's here. So part of what I do, and I think a lot of people do, but I can attest to the yes, please share. The 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 rigor it takes, but also the benefit is you you or my approach is I attack different things. I look at things differently and I try to. Cover my basis. Preparation is key for me, and I think it's key in in life. A lot of different things, and you got to look at things from different perspectives. You know, you don't you go in blindly. You might luck out, but that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. So I had to take a long look at myself. Keep trying. Keep asking questions. I mean, I mentioned I was in finance for a significant time. I built a lot of different skill sets. I generated and built a lot of confidence in certain areas and then i you know with awareness and with understanding that you know there's risk involved made the decision consciously to transition to a more strategic kind of on the hook putting myself out there mindset and opportunity and and then you know part of doing that and part of finding that opportunity was being able to demonstrate that and commit to it so this is another element that it's not associated specifically with, you know, executive roles, but you'll hear this a lot. You might have experienced this where it's, let's say you're doing your performance evaluation or something. It's like, I did this, 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 this. I did everything right. Yes. Yeah. Well, you didn't get this. This didn't happen. So sorry. And it's, I mean, it's that it. You're, you're putting yourself on the hook, whether it's a goal, like a sales goal, whether it's leading a team that's, you know, yes. facing concern, whatever it is, you're signing up for results, not at any cost, but results. And you have to be creative and engaging, whether it's teams or resources, oftentimes, and I can get into more of this in my next role if you're interested, it's engaging a team of people with dynamic, um, diverse perspectives and really taking that resource and leveraging it so you can squeeze the resource so you can find success because it's it's not a it's not a self-defined path. It's not obvious. And so I know I threw a lot of stuff out at you, but there's a lot there. It's really about for me to summarize, at least at that point, self-awareness, being deliberate, recognizing you don't know everything, and doing everything you can to leverage, you know, your resources and really approach things with the learning slash okay, you're never going to figure this out mindset. Don't get too comfortable. You know, that, that in a nutshell, that's kind of what it is. 
and then you just execute and, and redo, redo as much as possible. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can see the the commit to to the result, commit to a destination, commit, and then I love the analytical mindset of a kind of okay, what do I know? What do I don't know? What do I don't know that I don't know? Who who can help? And it's it's almost like this this inter Bowen, I don't know, analytical chart of, of uh, when you say resources in my mind goes, you know, that for me, it's talent and skills and strength of mine and of others. And then collectively, uh, where that, where is that point in, on the you know, pentagram where all these circles, yeah. you know, meet. Yeah, yeah the, the, the one in the middle where this, this, this one all meets, and then to really find that. And I, I can hear, I can hear that. Yes, it takes commitment, it takes work, it takes self awareness, but it's so worthy. That's what I'm hearing and what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, th this is, uh, you know, oftentimes you get in it, like whatever it is, right? But and it, it doesn't have to be this, but it, it could just be anything, and. Self-reflection the more and recognizing, you know, success or wins or whatever you want to call it. Oftentimes, and I, I'm better at this now, but it's always a challenge for me, is when I'm in it, I'm like, oh, this is a slog, this sucks, whatever, whatever. you know, and, and whether it's at work or like I did law school and my JD at the same time while I was working full time, it was like, oh, is this ever going to end? And then you take a step back and you're like, well, I've grown so much. This is so important. Like I, this was great. And, you know, I'm not a masochist, at least I don't think I am. So I keep going back to things uh, where I'm like, oh, I guess, well, why not, you know, take it easy for a while. It's like, yeah, okay. A day or two has gone by Well, I'm going to jump back into it. And part of that's a, a recognition or realization of that. Yeah, it is, it is worth it for me. It's a passion for me. And I've experienced enough kind of cost benefit pain versus you know growth out of it where i personally recognize it's valuable to me it's not like you know i've seen plenty of people it's like i gotta be you know a vice president or i gotta be like this it's like why you know this comes back to self-awareness do you really want to do that what does that mean you know chasing this brass ring or whatever it, it's it's one way to look at it but if you hate that you're going to be miserable so whether it's a, a leadership role or an executive role or whatever, that self-awareness and reflection is, to me, it's definitely key and it definitely um, will, will contribute to, you know, happiness, whether it's delayed a little bit while you're in the weeds going through it, yeah. um, going forward. Otherwise, you know, people are like, what did I just do for the last five years? I'm, I don't want to be miserable or whatever. It's like, okay. It's just very important. It's it's a skill that you can constantly cultivate. You need to, um, but it's critical, in my opinion, to uh, achieve kind of sustainability and, and satisfaction throughout your career. And thanks very much for saying that and to really highlight it, you know, given, given your background and what you shared with us, what I know about you. Of, yes, we can we can do a lot of things that it doesn't mean that we can't make time to self-reflect, to pause. Um, and as you said, it doesn't need to be for this really long time and unreasonable time. You choose the time when it fits into your life and the length of that break. I think what you're emphasizing, and I, I totally agree with it, is be intentional about it. Be aware of when those breaks are needed and be intentional about it to yeah. to make the most out of them uh, for your benefit, for your value. And this is where it has to serve you. I read this quote uh, earlier today that I'm taking care of myself so I can take care of you too. And yeah. that that's what I'm hearing that you're, you're doing in order for you to be good with the team, to, to be a father, a husband, and to benefit the community around you uh, and at work, you have to take care of yourself. Yeah, and I think you must be psychic, Andrea, because, you know, my um, 
my wife, Amy, um, you, you know, um, and I mentioned prior to this, this podcast starting, um, uh, one of my boys has his complex medical situation. He actually spent a little over his first year of his life in the hospital. And so Seattle Children's down the road, very happy and great that he could be there, but he has a lot of different um, uh, medical conditions that most of them he's overcome, but he's still facing them. But it's to the point where, you know, my wife has a presentation she's given and she's reached out to, you know, communities of, of people that have, uh, are facing similar situations. Um, and it's all about resilience. And she, you know, and, 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 and it's kind of a, it's a different term of exactly what you're talking about. Make time for yourself. Be, be mindful. You got to help yourself to help everyone else. And so we call it resilience, but uh, kind of transitioning to, you know, where I'm at now and why I'm there. It took a lot of exactly what you're describing for me to get there. So um, I'd like to share a little bit of that with you if you're all right. So, yes. um, you know, COVID, I actually, not when COVID hit, but when the impacts hit, I was in, I wouldn't say it's my dream job, a really cool job. I worked at the, at the venture capital arm at Boeing, Horizon X. It was a very small group. I left a great job that I really liked, people I've worked with forever to go there. And it was, it was very ambiguous. It was very like, what's going on? Well, what happened was, is Boeing decided to get out of that business and they basically sold the business or got out of it. So, you know, while layoffs and stuff were going on, it was like, okay, everyone's, you know, this is not a layoff. This is, you have to find another job where you're going. Well, I had the opportunity to stay, um, but I was like, okay, there's a lot going on. My son's in the hospital. We're going there every day. I need a break. One of us needs a break. My wife's an executive. She's working, you know, she's working some time, all that stuff. And I didn't, you know, I, I took a lot. Um, not only, I, mean, I, I don't I don't define myself by my, my profession or my job or anything per se, but I get a lot of value and, you know, there's a lot wrapped up in it. But mm -hmm. I had to make the deliberate choice to go, okay, one of us needs a break and one of us needs to kind of lighten the load. And so that was me. I, I decided... I was in a different position and, and my wife would be better off being the, I'll use this cheesy term, primary breadwinner, but you yes. know, we need insurance and all that. Yeah. So I, I took the choice. We talked it over. I took the choice to kind of take a break, did not knowing what that would look like. Like, you know, it wasn't like they were handing out jobs left and right. So I took a, I took a, a, a break from really doing anything for a couple of months and really helped. Um, our son came home and, and, and kind of permanently, and then it was like, okay, things are getting a little more stable. What do I do now? Well, I couldn't, and I've decided, at least at that time, it wasn't a full-time job. It wasn't a traditional opportunity I could go back to. So I, after a lot of soul searching, I kind of stood up a consulting company, or I did, and you know, found a, found a couple of clients. I mean, I, there's a lot of stuff I could have done more I could have done all this marketing but after you know a lot of work a lot of just like personal growth I managed to kind of find a happy medium where you know, I was working doing um, contract business development work as like a director for a company and that was great and then that fell off a little bit because of something happened or whatever and so to make a long story short or medium as I like to joke um it's been a continual growth for me to try to find and be comfortable with maybe not doing as much on the professional side. Yes. And I won't call it slowing down. It's just redirecting, being a dad, you know, I was a dad late in life kind of thing. You know, in case you haven't, you know, your, your, your viewers can't tell I'm not like 20 and um, you know, there's a lot of energy. I got to expand all this stuff. Right. Yes. Um, and it, it was challenging, really challenging at first, but after a lot of reflection, I mean, very deliberate about it. I, you know, I wanted to second guess my decisions all the time and I did. And then I was like, I got to stay the course. I got to stay the course. And so whether it was that being deliberate or not, I'm in a, a place right now where, you know, boys are in a different position. 
more flexibility. Um, and I, I'm happy where I'm at. And I think, you know, down the road in the next near term, intermediate term, maybe it'll be time to transition to a, a more formal kind of full-time traditional role. Um, but I like what I'm doing now. And I've leveraged everything I've talked about and more to create these opportunities for even the flexibility. So this is just, I want to make a point here. You know, people, it's really hard to see what growth you're having or what kind of benefits or you're building as you go through these life challenges and you're making, you know, these transitions. Yes. And you look at a piece of paper and you're like, well, my resume doesn't reflect that. There is so much capital in that. And whether I said it was resilience before, whatever you want to frame it. Yes. It teaches you a lesson and it prepares you it's hard. It sound, I sound cheesy. It sounds cheesy to me even saying it, but all these choices and taking, you know, a hard look and, and, and putting your, putting your neck out there, but very deliberately that builds character. It builds growth. It builds opportunity because you're, you're growing as a person, not only personally and professionally, it's, it's hard to, it's really hard to, to convey the the benefit there but it's it's huge so doing that whether you think you're not moving forward or you think you're stalled or whatever it's you're not i mean you're doing what you need to do this is just the time to do it and then the time to do something else might be later but you're doing it so, yes yeah well i mean talking about you committing that you're gonna be a father that you're going to be the father that you want to be per choice to your to your sons and then the supportive husband mm -hmm. to your wife Amy so uh i think those are the things that you're right we can't really put on the resume but we can include them in the story we can build that story and the storyline and our skill and how to story tell um, because they are all going to be part of our growth eventually and being able to express them first it comes with what you said we need to keep track of them be aware of them and if we are intentional about them that's when we are conscious about them <laughs> not being unconscious so I love I love how these all are connected for you because what I'm also sensing that all the skills that you talked about and you walked us through that you you grew in your professional life, you used it in your personal life. Uh, you transitioned them into your personal life uh, to, to manage your workload, the time management, just, you know, I mean, I can't even imagine, you know, dealing with the whole hospital Um staff and doctors and and organizing that and being part of that i mean it, as he yeah. said so it's it's almost like dealing with the customers that when you were at boeing the external ones yeah i i was i'm, I'm kind of laughing to myself because you know i i have a i have a background in project management and i have my pmp but i don't really use them i never got to the point where like Oh, I'm going to do this huge project plan about how we can do that. I just, I can't get to that. But in my mind, I'm doing it. And you can imagine yes. how like two finance people, especially me, or I'm a little like, I don't know, I'm, I'm better now, but I was like rigid about how we can overthink or potentially overthink stuff. But yes. yeah, we definitely, you know, we definitely, it ebbs and flows, but these experiences and these skills you go, um, whether they're professional or personal or, or whatever, they're intertwined, they're interconnected. Um, and yeah, one benefit on one side can definitely benefit another, whatever way you want to look at it. Um, they're not, uh, they're not limited to one silo or another. Um, growing yourself as a, as a person, professionally, personally, whatever you want to call it, um, has uh, a lot of benefit um across the board it's a holistic uh, growth experience it's, not, it's hard to see that sometimes and you know challenging yourself I, this is a weird anecdote but you know i took like everybody in, in at least the mba courses i took you had to take this leadership course right 
Mm -hmm. where you go do ropes courses and trust falls and oh, stuff. Oh, yes. I don't want to take this. It's too touchy for me or whatever. And, you know, they did it really well. I got a lot out of that class. It's actually where I met my wife. So I'm trying to tie this back in. So we both worked at Boeing, but we didn't meet at Boeing per se. We met at MBA class that I put off to half the time as MBA and all, my whole law school time to where I was like, oh, I have to take it to graduate. So I went back and I'm like, oh, this is great. Not only I met my wife, it's actually a growth kind of learning experience. So my point being is, is I didn't think I was going to get and I still don't sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm I'm open and aware and receptive, but still my patterns kind of play in. I don't always think about it. Oh, yeah. Our resistance it's shows not... up, Brooke. You're, you're human, <laughs> just like I am. So, <laughs> yes, but I, I got a lot out of that and I met my wife. So I, I had to tie that in somehow. There's there's anyway, the, the bottom line, I'll say it over and over again. But um, growth is growth. You got to challenge mindset. People say get outside your comfort zone. That's definitely true. I never want to do it. I still don't want to do it a lot, but the value, the force multiplier that it brings is is there. You just got to do it. So. Well, I love how you said that. I don't want to do it, but I do it. Yeah. So it's, and this is what, uh, as my clients say, I preach too. Uh, there isn't a fearless life. You're still going to have fear. Fear is just going to show up. Is going forward with the fear and not being stopped by the fear is yeah. what changes people's course in life. As as you said, you didn't want to do the leadership class and the touchy feely stuff, but then at the end, this is where you met Amy. And I think that's how life is. You don't want to do something, then you say, okay, I'm going to do it. And then you find things that you never even imagined that you're going to find. And that's that mindset shift that you're bringing in and I'm talking about, and that's why we're here, is is to, to be aware that you can change your mind. You can feel the fear and still go through it. Yeah. Now, you said something that I want to touch on it, um, and maybe I'll open it up with what was surprising in, or what was something surprising as you think about transitions through all your transitions? Hmm. Well, I, 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 this sounds, I don't know if this is surprising, but um, seeing how the sausage was made, you know, you never want to see that, right? And and so I'll bring this to a, this may not be what you're looking for, but it's what jumps out in my mind. So I, I mentioned I left um, a job I really liked to go to, um, a BD role with Horizon X, right? But I was coming from, I I, I worked in uh, at Boeing. It was CAS, customer or commercial aviation services for years, and then they, you know, I left and they they transformed it back into Boeing Global Services. And I really liked and had appreciation for and a background of experience with these these service products that Boeing had, commercial especially. And so I had the opportunity to go work on something that I kind of made jokes about. When we're in finance. We were like, oh, is this a black hole of money? You know, and, no, color commentaries. This is just Brooks commentary. Um, and it was it was like this power by the hour maintenance solution. Right? The reason I bring this up is how the sausage is made. It was a it was a new, even though it's been proposed, it was a very new and I would say emergent product. And it's basically packaging all these services into a deal for a customer, you know, by the hour cost to maintain and service your fleet of airplanes, let's say. Well, how do you do that? You can estimate this, there's all this stuff that goes into it. How are you gonna deliver it? I mean, so I was one of the BD folks that was responsible for turning that thought into a, a representative reality. Wow. contracting it. And so, you know, there's all these processes in, in place where it's like, we're going to do this gate, we're going to bring all these resources together and all this stuff. But in the end, it's like, you're just sitting there and it's, you've got, you, you got to figure this out. You got to figure this out. You got to figure this out. And sometimes, as I talked about initially, you got to put yourself out there and you've got to be like, okay, wh what can we do for you? What's going to work? I don't know. 
we'll try to figure this out and then and then you go commit to it so i mean that was like emergent it sounds cheesy not cutting edge but we were doing a lot of things not on the fly but very new it, it was very interesting because i love that stuff but also at the time you're very like it's risky you're worried um and and to see that like on a day-to-day -day standpoint meeting with customers and walking through and trying to develop these proposed con ops develop estimates you know i i had to build business cases that you're like really because that's how you do it there's nothing else there so i i i was i was the reason why it was interesting and why i bring it up is you don't want to see how it's made or maybe you need to see how it's made because that's how it's made like this isn't this isn't unusual that's how you bring something from a concept into a reality especially something very complex yes. same thing i saw on rise next i mean part of the lesson i learned and i continue to learn is there's a slog things aren't easy i had a great director she's she's a great leader She's, I think she's the head of, of biz ops at Boeing now for commercial or something like that. And she learned this lesson the hard way. And I had to learn it the hard way over and over. Still have to. Things are never as easy as you think. Hard things definitely are not. Stay the course. You got to have the right mindset. It's iterative and just keep plugging at it. Put in the elbow grease, whatever you want to call it. And recognize that the plan is the plan, but what's this where like your strategy is whatever. And then like the second, you know, you start to implement, it changes. So you just got to be, whether it's resilient or reactive to that and be able to deal with things. Yes. You got to do that. So that was very, so to live that with the stakes we were at um, was very, was very informative, very helpful. And it's still a lesson I take going forward all the time. Because I want to wrap it up neatly and go, it's done. You know, I did this. And so does everybody, I think. And no, uh, it's, yeah, that's great. That's, that's like the fortuitous win. It's like, that was easy. Now let's move back to the hard stuff. Because that's how yeah. you get yeah. I mean, yeah, we all want to do that. You're yeah. right. Yes. It's our yeah. our mind that's saying, you know, choose the easy, easy one, choose the one that you know that can be delivered fast and, and all that efficient and so forth. So uh, kind of our mind is working against us, doesn't want us to choose something that's difficult, that you don't know, that's ambiguous, uh, that's scary, and it has a lot of fears. So that's why yeah. you have to make that decision of kind of go against yourself and how you feel and go with those versus being stopped. Well, I, Brooke, what say, I, I hear... don't know if you ever get comfortable around that, but you, yeah, you need to know that that's the reality you're going to be facing. Mm -hmm. and and be aware and mindful that that's going to be a reality. You just have to know that. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to be in shock all the time. Yes. Yeah, so it's almost like being comfortable, but not being comfortable. Yeah. Knowing that it won't be comfortable and to be comfortable in that, that comfort, maybe it's the other side. It's that comfort is is the, the a sign of, okay, I'm not sure that, I'm really comfortable that that might not be the reality. So is it is it something else that's going on that gives you that feeling? So yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot to play with there. And so Brooke, as we're as we're closing up, I this was you, what you shared last year. Uh I want to ask you this closing question of what changed inside of you as you were, as you said, you watched the sausage being made. Yeah, I, I mean, what changed in me, I, I think it was just literally the awareness. I mean, it's, it's, this stuff's right in front of you. Like, it's a lesson that's right in front of you all the time, right? Like, people don't want to recognize it, but how many things are you going to get by doing it easy or do it? Not, it's not exactly easy. It's just by taking this path every day. Yeah, you know, when I mow my lawn, yeah, I'm going to do it or whatever. I'm not going to try to innovate or whatever, but, if I got to do something that's totally new, the first time's not going to go easy. Or if it does, it's probably not the best way. You know, you just don't know. And so, coming to that realization, maybe I'm, you know, thick-headed or whatever. 
but being exposed to it so many times, but when you're in the thick of it, it's almost like you just you just have to learn it, like personally. And and so, but it's there all the time. So that I mean, it's really, I, I guess I learned a lot of things. Um, but it's being mindful, whatever buzzword, mind, you know, being being deliberate, thinking about and self reflecting on what you're doing in the now. You know, this is another thing. It's an anecdote, but I'm going to put it out there. I always, and I'm still like this. I still have to fight it. Planning, planning, planning. Now, now is what matters. Being there, being present, and understanding what's going on. Not only like how to respond to it, yeah. but understanding like this is a this is a problem or not a problem. This is a dynamic situation. It's not going to be easy, but you're getting a lesson every time. Like, you know, these 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 anecdotes about. Oh, Edison failed 10 times. I mean, whatever. Like, yeah, that's how you get there. Like it's it's persistence and awareness and and understanding yourself and recognizing it's not a linear straight path. I mean, that's what I learned that and I continue to learn it, but that was just a very poignant moment in a role where I got to see it and live it because I was living it. And without yeah. accepting it, I was going to be in a world of hurt on a regular basis. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where, you know, I go with the flow, even if the flow is really fast and furious and, and unknown. Uh, but I, my my fun picture is that I like to share is that you need to be aware how you stand in the in the if the flow is a river, you have to be aware how you're standing if you're facing against the flow it's going to be really difficult you're going to work against the flow but if you're placed if you're going with the flow that means you're facing the flow and then you there are times when you respond differently but just being aware of how you're standing in the river how you're standing in the water water being life uh gives you so much advantage and that's that's where you're you're talking about and that's why I wanted to invite you here so you you share your flow and what you have learned so on that note Brooke um, I like to give the mic back to my guests what would you like to close us out with today well I, I had something and then it just totally spaced out <laughs> um you know I think this is, and I, I don't want to key into like engineers. I, I've had the opportunity to mentor, oftentimes wondering why I was the mentor and you know, I had a mentee, whether they were engineers or, or, or a lot of different backgrounds, because I, I kind of touched a lot. Um, I mean, it's really about believing in yourself. Be yourself. That's, I can't stress that enough. I am not. I, I, you ask anybody or ask most people, I don't fit what I would call a traditional mold. I mean, you know, a lot of times people, it's a little different now, but you think about, oh, what's an attorney or a CPA or something? You know, I might not be as stereotypically boring as actuaries. You know, that's the joke between accountants and actuaries. The actuaries are even more boring. But like, oftentimes I'll meet people and they just, they don't expect what me, like, for whatever reason, right? And that's yeah. not typical. I mean, that's typical, but um, but I bring me, and I got to be authentic. Now I have to, I have to recognize where I'm at. I have to, you know, fit a role to some extent. And, and, and to some extent, though, I'm myself, and and I don't want to be comfortable, be, because you know, comfort doesn't necessarily translate to growth. But being genuine and being yourself. And being true to yourself and recognizing that it's so important and, and it's definitely something you can do and incorporate into getting where you want to be and if if for some reason you know i faced a lot of challenges like this path is this like I, i'll share just you know because this is so much what my first decade in corporate life was and i, I bucked the trend to some extent and i have but it was a lot of work like oh you want to be this level you want to be an executive Here's what you got to do. 
you got to start as like at Boeing and finance. You got to be a level K. Yep. You got to be a first level manager and you got to deal with this stuff and do whatever. And then maybe you'll get to this. And then maybe, and I'm just like, okay, I can put the time in and whatever, but that's not me. I am going to go. I just, it, it won't, I won't thrive in that environment. Not because I'm scared of it. I, I just won't. And I want these things. So I need to demonstrate how I can do that or, you know, get there without following this preconceived or actually, you know, the, the status quo. Yeah. And it's doable, but that's tension and, and stuff you face all the time. I don't think you want to do it without being true to yourself. It doesn't end well. So that's my that's my message. My bottom line message is um, be true to yourself. Know who you are. There's room for you. Don't forget that. Oh, well, on that note, everyone, choose yourself. And not the process, not the status quo, the predefined path. Choose yourself. And then you will find your path. Yeah. Well, Brooke, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for sharing. Yes. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's good talking to you.